Welcome back to another episode of Equity Insights. Today we're diving into a critical aspect of real estate syndications, the legal documents investors need to understand when considering investing. Welcome to Equity Insights, a channel dedicated to documenting our journey to 100 world-class communities. Real estate syndications offer a powerful and collaborative approach to investing in large-scale commercial properties, but they also come with their fair share of legal considerations. Today we'll be discussing the legal documents that investors need to understand if considering taking part in a real estate syndication. From private placement memorandums to subscription agreements and operating agreements, these legal documents form the backbone of a successful syndication venture. The Private Placement Memorandum, The Comprehensive Guide. The Private Placement Memorandum, or PPM, is one of the most critical documents in a real estate syndication. It provides an in-depth overview of the investment opportunity, including property details, business plans, risk factors, financial projections, fees, and much more. To understand where the name originates, you have to understand that real estate syndications commonly raise money through what are known as private placements. It is simply a sale of equity ownership in the company to private investors that become owners in the company. The reason they are classified as private is not because they are private investors, but because the offer and sale of equity does not involve any public filing or registration of the security with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. And it falls under an exemption to the registration requirements, Rule 506, which we mentioned in our previous video. As an investor, carefully review the PPM because it allows you to understand the terms and conditions of the investment thoroughly. Second, the operating agreement. This is what sets the rules. The operating agreement outlines the roles, responsibilities, and rights of the syndicator and the investors. This contract governs the relationship between both parties and covers essential topics such as profit sharing, voting rights, decision-making processes, distributions, and dispute resolution procedures. Investors must pay close attention to the OA to ensure they know their rights and obligations. Number three, the subscription agreement and the subscription documents. This is how you formalize your commitment. The subscription agreement is the document through which investors formally commit to participating in the syndication. It outlines the investment terms, the amount of capital contributed, and other relevant details. It's essential for investors to carefully review and understand the subscription agreement before signing, as it represents the formal commitment to the investment opportunity. The subscription agreement is part of a larger set of documents called the subscription documents, which include all forms and paperwork investors must complete to become official participants in the syndication. Investors provide essential information, such as if they are investing as an individual or entity, their accreditation status, investment amount, and other required details, including filling out corresponding tax forms for U.S. citizens or residents or non-U.S. citizens. This can all be viewed on the IRS website. Number four, a partnership agreement. These documents outline the legal structure of the syndication entity usually a limited liability company or limited partnership. They specify the rights and responsibilities of managing members or general partners, and they may include provisions related to voting, management, and dissolution of the entity. Understanding the structure is vital to grasp how decisions will be made within the syndication. The three main benefits of the limited partnership agreement are, number one, it limits the liability of the limited partners. This structure protects the limited partners' assets from lawsuits. Number two, it allows for passive investing. A limited partnership allows you to create a contractual agreement with investors, so their involvement in the investment will always be passive. And number three, income tax pass-through to limited partners. Limited partners receive a Schedule K-1 yearly to report taxes to the IRS. The taxable income passes through to them and is reported on each individual's personal tax return. Understanding these legal documents is paramount to make an informed decision decisions in real estate syndication. As investors, it's essential to review and comprehend each document thoroughly. 
Seeking legal counsel or financial advice is highly recommended to clarify any doubts and ensure you're fully aware of the risks and benefits. In real estate syndications, investors are presented with several legal documents that outline the terms and conditions of their investment. These documents provide transparency, clarity, and legal protection for the syndicator and the investors alike. It is essential for investors to thoroughly review and understand these documents before committing to any real estate syndication. That concludes today's episode. Thank you for joining me as we explored the legal documents and real estate syndications. If you found the episode valuable, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Requity Insights hosted by our team at the Requity Group. You can find recordings of all shows along with our opt-in form to set up a call and view future investment offerings on our company website, therequitygroup.com, also listed in the show notes.